You have got the power of the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you. And when you are in over your head, when you are in deep waters, when the trials and troubles of life come your way, my friend, all you have to do now is activate the equipment that you've been given. And you'll be able to see it all from a different vantage point and a different perspective. Which is why I could not wait to get up here because I wanted to share with any of you, and that is all of us who are in trials in our life. By the way, every single one of you under the sound of my voice are in one of three places. You need to know that even if you are not in a trial right now, first of all, we would like to tell you we are happy for you. But every single one of us is in one of three places. You're either right smack dab in the middle of a trial on your way into one or on your way out of one. Because the nature of the world in which we live, Jesus said, John 16, in this world, you will have trouble. You don't have to go looking for it, just keep living and the trouble will come and find you. But in the midst of that, we can believe in the truth that is told to us in two of my favorite verses in all of scripture. From Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. Now unto him who is able to do, exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond, all that you can ask or even think according to the power that works within us to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever somebody ought to say amen to that that means there is no trouble that you are facing there is no difficulty that you're in there is no pit you have dug for yourself there is no situation or issue or drama that is currently unfolding in any of our lives that his power is not greater still. You may feel overwhelmed, but you need to know that your God does not. I love these two verses so much. They are a doxology. A doxology means basically an outpouring of praise and worship to God. This is one of the pinnacles of all of Paul's writing. And here's the thing, y'all. When he wrote the book of Ephesians, he was in prison. He was basically on Roman house arrest. He is in a situation he does not particularly care to be in. He is in a trial and right there in the midst of the trial, he has an outburst of praise and worship to God. Some of you stood to your feet and you said, I'm just like Paul, I'm in the middle of a trial. But in the middle of your trial, you did exactly what Paul did. Stand up and worship God. It's one thing to have a doxology while you're not in a trial. It's a whole nother thing. Captures God's attention in a whole nother way. When you are in a trial and yet you choose to have an outburst of praise and worship to our great, amazing God. That's what Paul did. I want to walk with you through these verses because if you can walk out of here and if I can walk out of here, seeing with our eyes open, seeing our, our trials and tribulations with a brand new perspective, it will literally change all of our lives. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that you can ask and if you can't ask it because your brain can't even figure out the right words to verbalize what you're trying to ask, he says, that's all right, just think it and I can do past that. To him, be the glory. In the church, that's us. And in Christ Jesus, both now and forever. The very first step in the progression through these two verses that are gonna change our perspective, the way that we look at our trials, the very first step seems like the most significant but it really is the hinge on which the rest of it turns. And it is the word now. Paul says, I want you to start thinking about the greatness and the power and the amazing ability that God has toward you, that he wants you to experience in your regular everyday living as a single woman, as a wife, as a mother, as a person working in corporate America, as a person working in full-time ministry, as a volunteer, as a parent at the school, as a teacher, as an accountant, as a lawyer. He says, I want you to start thinking about God's power and I don't want you to have thought about it yesterday. We're not talking about yesterday. He says, I don't even want you to think about it in your tomorrows. He says, there is a time to consider how great God's power is toward you and that time is when he wants you to think about it right now. Now is the time for you to make a connection between what's happening in your life 
and how God wants to express his power to you in that specific situation. Y'all, this is important because if you're anything like me, sometimes there is a disconnect between my reality and my relationship with God. Sometimes I forget that the stuff I'm learning on Sunday is supposed to apply to Monday. Sometimes I forget that all the stuff I gathered, the encouragement that I, that I gleaned, that the word of God that was spoken over me, that the fear that was prayed out of me, that the salvation that I received when I came down at the altar, sometimes I forget that this is not supposed to be compartmentalized in some little corner of my life saved for a rainy day. That he wants to be involved on my Monday and then at work on my Tuesday and then at home on my Wednesday and then while I'm trying to figure out another way to cook chicken on my Thursday and then on my Friday and on, while I'm running errands on my Saturday that this is supposed to apply to my right now. Would you know that what happened to you yesterday means everything in your today? That it's connected, that God planned it or I allowed it that I fully intend to walk with you through it, that the only reason why I allow circumstances in your life is because sometimes when we are flat on our back, that's the only time we ever take a breath and look up and see him for who he really is. And so no, all the circumstances of our lives, obviously they are not good, but somehow he works all things together for our good. And so when you're in the trial, when you're in the fire, when you find that things are difficult, that you're having issues, that there is a surprise, a, a, a something that has met you in your year that you were not planning for, when you find that that has happened, just know that the master chef has got his eye on you. And he wants you to know that right now is the time. Now is the time that he wants you to begin to consider. Don't disconnect. Connect the present tenseness of God's ability with your current circumstances. Not for yesterday, not even necessarily for tomorrow. Paul says, today, I want you to think about the fact that now is the time for you to make the connection. So he says, there is a time and the time is now. And he says, this is the time for us to do some turning. And the turning is unto him. Now, unto him. He says, I'm going to tell you exactly what to do right now in the middle of your trial. I'm going to tell you, he says, to divert your attention, to turn it 180 degrees away from focusing on your trial to focusing on him. He says, you've got to turn your attention. You have got to discipline yourself, instruct yourself not to concentrate on and nurse and uh, pay attention to the issue. You've got to pay attention to God. He's the one that deserves your attention, not the problem. When we have drama that unfolds in your life, if you're like me, your tendency is to stay up a few extra minutes or a couple of hours at night going over the issue that you were facing. Or you walk through the bookstore and it seems like every single book you are passing on the shelf has to do with your drama. And so you pull those books off and you take them up to the register to buy them so that you can read more about your drama. And then you walk through the magazine stand and they're on the magazine stand. Every single feature that is on the cover has to do with your drama. And then Dr. Oz is talking about it too. And so is Dr. Phil. And then, you know, Oprah's not on anymore, but she's still got that network and she's talking about it too. Everywhere you look, you are face to face with your issue. So you give it inadvertently, we don't mean to, but we give it the attention that is supposed to be given to our God. You know what worship is, don't you? Worship is attention. And some of us are worshiping our issue instead of worshiping God. We are giving to the drama what's supposed to be reserved only for our God.